learned that fate is not without a sense of irony. And we learned to take no thoughts for tomorrow because tomorrow has no thoughts of you. In October of last year, I had something to happen. Typically, I'm the go-to person for uh, knowing what benefits your health, what's good for you, what herbs, what fruits, what vegetables. So people will call any time of the night, well, hey, my leg is hurting, or I'm feeling this biting sensation in my legs, or my diabetes is acting up. So what herbs and what fruits and what vegetables? And so I'm doing it for myself, so I'm sharing it, and I'm helping everybody else. Well, in October, the health guru had a setback. I had a massive brain aneurysm. And it was out of the blue. I stood up in, in my room to go to the restroom, and I felt a real cool gush of water just pour over me. That's what it felt like initially. And then I felt these real sharp pains in my shoulders, and I told my husband, I said, something just doesn't feel right. It's, it's funny, and it's different. Well, long story short, I went through a five-hour brain surgery in Atlanta. Uh, I spent about three weeks in ICU. And when I woke up, my doctor was Dr. Gupta. Uh, who everyone was like, this is just, you had the best brain doctor and he was on House, you know that show that was on TV, House, where all the doctors talk about all that cool stuff. He had the best doctor. And I'm laying in the bed and I'm thinking to myself, why me? I couldn't understand because I was the ginger and the turmeric and the lemon and the honey and the alkaline and I'm, I'm doing all the things that I thought would make me exempt from something happening to me and it happened nevertheless. Well, let's rewind a little bit. I had some things to happen to me prior that caused me to drown in this immense amount of stress. And a lot of the stress that I was going through I kind of tried just sweeping under the rug. My brother was murdered here in Macon and it was very impactful for me. It was very heavy on me. But my family depends on me and I'm the oldest of nine, so I couldn't stop. I just had to keep going and I had to keep sweeping and I had to keep tossing things over my shoulder. Well, I laid in my hospital bed after my aneurysm and my doctor said, do you remember who you are? I looked at him and said, yeah, I remember who I am. He said, do you, you know where you are? Yeah, I'm at the hospital. Do you know why you're here? No, I remember I had a headache, sir, and I'm ready to go home. <laughs> well, you're not gonna go home yet, that's what the doctor said. You, you have some things going on. Did you look on the side of your bed? I look on the side of my bed. By this time, I go to feeling around, and there are tubes hanging from the back of my head where it's still coil running from my brain down my spine, and on the side of the bed, there's this bag full of blood and what looks like clear liquid. He said, we're gonna have to drain your brain for 10 days because there's still blood and fluid left on the brain. So by this time, it's registering that, okay, something bad has happened, something, something big has happened. He came back in the room and I said, well, when am I going to be okay? So we're going to run a series of tests and then we'll, we'll let you know when you're going home. And they started to run the test and the first doctor that came in, she said, well, I want you to draw some things. And she said, well, draw a clock. And I had forgotten how to draw a clock. And it upset me. And I cried because I'm an artist too. So forgetting how to draw anything was hurtful to me. And I laid in my bed and I prayed. I told God, I don't know what's happening, but I know that you do. And anybody that knows my anatomy better than me, it's you. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I would like to feel okay. I would like to drop this clock. And she's telling me to drop. Well, the doctors were in and out. I'm upset because now they're saying, you gotta take this channel blocker and you gotta take this and you gotta take that. And I'm, well, lady, listen, I, I take herbs. <laughs> I don't take medications. She says, well, I understand that, but right now we gotta take this. And so 
my husband was there the entire time and I appreciate him more than anything because having a partner who's endearing and enduring is very important. Even though I was still hard headed and fussy, I coped. And in a little while, another doctor came in. She said, okay, well, we're gonna ask you to do some stuff again. And by the time she came in, I had remembered how to draw the clock. And where my speech was a little bit slurred and my vocabulary was a little bit off, I was finding me again. And those parts of me that I had lost during the murder of my brother and of course of events, uh, you know, some other things happened. I was just beginning to find myself in that bed. And I realized something that was very significant to today because my husband signed me up. I didn't think I was gonna get up here. But he's in the corner and he's saying, just tell it. Just tell it, it's going to. <laughs> but I realized something laying in that bed that everything that I had lost, I gained it back. I learned to be thankful for my brain aneurysm. I learned to be thankful for it because the next thing that I was told when the doctor came in was that, hey, realistically, we don't, we're gonna, we put a coil on your brain. So now I got this cool platinum brain. It's not regular brain anymore. It's, it's a platinum brain. So I got this platinum coil on my brain. But he came in and he said, well, we don't know if it'll rupture again or when it'll rupture or, or any of that. So who knows when you're in the next moment, maybe your last. Well, the significance of that is, I didn't know that before the brain aneurysm. I never knew what moment was gonna be my last before then. But what the brain aneurysm did, was it made me look at my husband different. It made me look at my children different. It made me look at my friends different. It made me appreciate God different. It made my love deeper. It made my speech stronger. It made my touch more endearing than ever before. So if I leave you guys with anything, you'll never be more free than today. Thank you.